As a former academic librarian, the importance of authors retaining their rights extends further than open access and funder compliance. We need to watch the far horizon and be mindful of innovative developments in 21st century open scholarship and of legacy publishers' ownership and control creeping upstream in the research timeline. In this way, rights retention needs to be adopted not just for journal articles, but for all research outputs, including registered reports, micropublications, etc. We need to return control of research findings dissemination back to where it belongs, academia. When, where and to whom research findings can be disseminated should not be under the control of external third parties. Author rights retention must be decoupled from publishing business models. It shouldn't matter what mode of publication is selected. Rights retention should be automatically in place at the outset and not a factor in deciding where an author chooses to publish. If obtaining and controlling authors' rights wasn't commercially valuable, some publishers wouldn't make such a fuss about authors retaining their rights. The prior licensing model is strong, which is why institutional rights retention policies are so powerful in support of their researchers. Licensing is done and dusted before publication, even before article submission. Implementing rights retention is considered difficult. However, this needs to be compared to current burdensome complexities such as managing embargoes and inconsistent policy stacks. Plus, if rights retention goes in the too difficult bucket now, research dissemination won't be in a happy place for academia in five years' time. Because control of rights is so important, academia should use all the tools at its disposal to repossess them. A combination of local I mean, rights retention, which is relatively quick and straightforward to implement, and national, such as secondary publishing rights, which is more long term, would work well.